How's it going everyone? Vlad here and welcome back to the next video. As you can see by the title as well as the writing on the whiteboard next to me, we're going to be talking about SCADA systems. And so SCADA systems are critical to modern manufacturing as well as industrial automation. So we're going to be talking and basically dissecting a lot of information when it comes to these systems. As you can see here, we're going to talk about the very basics, the definition of SCADA, the different components. We're going to then talk about the architecture, how it is deployed in a true manufacturing environment. How does it interface to your HMIs and PLCs and why it is not an HMI system versus a SCADA system. And then we're gonna be talking how it interfaces to the upper systems like an MES or an ERP perhaps. We're also gonna talk about good and bad practices. So understanding what is a good SCADA deployment, what is a bad SCADA deployment. We're then going to talk about business needs. At the end of the day, a manufacturing business needs to put out finished goods. So how does SCADA fit into solving some of those challenges and providing value to the business as a system that makes the justifiable expense of integrating and deploying a full-blown SCADA? Last but not least, there's going to be some Q&A. So make sure you stick until the end. And if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts that haven't been shared or answered in this video, make sure to leave them down in the comments. More than happy to address some of the nuances, of course, of different verticals, different manufacturers, or different use cases. So happy to talk about how we can help you with better understanding SCADA when it comes to your career, maybe working in SCADA, programming different SCADA platforms, or maybe it is implementing, deploying, or troubleshooting a current deployment of SCADA. But without any further delay, let's get started. So what is a SCADA? The acronym itself stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. And that is pretty much a mouthful, but what it truly means is that it is a system that is capable of controlling, but also storing or acquiring data from your plant floor operations. And both of these components are very important and typically are part of any SCADA deployment. Some will argue that you could have the control piece standalone or you can have the data piece standalone. Again, there's going to be little nuances on how they're going to be deployed in different verticals, but usually a SCADA is going to control multiple machines or multiple areas. And the SCADA is also going to give you a historical view of some of the data or the information that has been occurring on the plant floor. So in a typical environment, what does that actually mean? First of all, you have your PLC and HMI systems. You have your machines, you have your process that is running on the plant floor. And if you have an operator that can go to that machine, usually they will be faced with an HMI screen that allows them to see the status of the machine, but also to interact with different parameters of the machine. It allows them to start and stop. It allows them to look at different fault codes the SCADA system is going to connect to multiple instances of that HMI and PLC combo in order to control them synchronously. And what that typically means is that a SCADA is not necessarily going to be concerned about the same granularity as a local standalone HMI. It will be mostly concerned with orchestrating the flow of the entire production line. So that typically means is it can start all of the machines at once. It means it can monitor the throughput of the product at every machine. It means that it can slow down or throttle the speed of a specific machine to accommodate a certain inflow of product or maybe rebalance the workflow of product. And so if I were to paint you a picture of what a SCADA looks like, if you watch the show The Simpsons, you've often seen Homer sit in front of this large screen where there's a lot of different buttons, dials, there's going to be a lot of different charts and graphs. And so of course, on The Simpsons is going to be a little bit of humor, but in reality, a SCADA system in the real world manufacturing environment is very similar to that. So a SCADA is rarely going to be seen directly on the plant floor, although it is possible, but more importantly, it will be seen in control rooms. So entire rooms, imagine dedicated to people. It could be a single person, it could be multiple people, watching multiple screens, as I've said, of multiple areas doing some kind of a process, and they would be able to monitor, but also control and see the information on a specific piece of machine or operation. So basically the components are as follows. The SCADA is going to be able to tie in to a PLC. The SCADA is going to be able to, very importantly, we'll talk about the distinction with the MES systems, 
control a piece of equipment, meaning it has the capability to start and stop a machine. And that nuance is very important because that will affect your architecture. But ultimately, it's also able to store, so it's able to pull the data, the information from the machine. And unlike a PLC that is usually not meant to store large amounts of data, a SCADA is capable to track what has been happening over hours, over shifts. In some instances, you could do it over weeks or months or even longer periods of time, but usually it will give you at least some visibility into the past as to how the system has been performing. Now, the very important distinction between a SCADA and MES is the fact that the SCADA is going to track technical information. So this is going to be a very important point as we talk about what is the difference between the two, but ultimately a SCADA is, is concerned about the parameters of the machines. So I've mentioned a little bit the speed. I didn't mention PID loops, right? So it's gonna be able to track your PID parameters. It's going to be able to track things like temperature, pressure, volume measures, right? So it's able to transform data, but ultimately it's all going to be on the technical side. It is very rarely going to be concerned with business values. For example, a SCADA is not going to spit out the cost loss on a specific line. It can be, of course, programmed to do that, but ultimately it is less concerned about the business metrics. It is a lot more concerned with the technical metrics of your process. And so this brings us to the next point, which is architecture, right? So I'm going to put here architecture. And basically the SCADA sits, as I've mentioned a couple of times, between your PLC slash HMI and your MES and ERP layers. And when I say it sits between them, it doesn't necessarily mean that the data needs to flow through the SCADA into an MES from a PLC. It just means that historically it has been developed as a layer that will orchestrate, as I've mentioned a couple of times, the operation of your mach machines, which are generally operated via PLCs and HMIs. So I'm going to talk about architecture here a little bit and so ultimately I'm going to create a simple diagram so here you have machine one here you have machine two here you have machine three so on and so forth so you have multiple machines again it could be discrete it could be processed it doesn't necessarily matter what they are and each one of these machines like I mentioned before it has a PLC it can even have multiple PLCs it also has an HMI so again, there's going to be controllers that do something within that machine. It could be motors, it could be sensors, it could be drives, right? So there's going to be a lot of different components, field services and field devices here inside of our machine. Same goes for machine three, machine four, so on and so forth. SCADA, like I mentioned, will control those machines. So it needs to, first of all, communicate to those machines. So SCADA is going to live as I mentioned a little bit earlier, in a room where basically it has connectivity to each one of those machines. And so ultimately this in the real world or the current manufacturing environment typically means that there's going to be a network involved on the OT side, which will consolidate a lot of this machinery into a certain process where the SCADA resides. And so where does the SCADA actually live? What is SCADA? SCADA is basically a piece of software that typically lives on a computer or in a large environment on a server, right? So here, if I was to look inside of a SCADA room, usually I would see racks of servers. Of course, in smaller environments, a server is nothing but a computer, like I've mentioned a little bit earlier, but a server provides some redundancy or resiliency. So all of these signals are going to go out into the server, and then that software is ultimately going to have different screens from which the process can be controlled. So here I'm drawing different screens in front of which we have an operator that's going to be looking at them. And so all of these screens are connected to the SCADA. Again, the software itself is obviously pushing whatever the screen needs to be, but ultimately the processing is done on the server and allows the operator to interface to say, start this line, start this specific area, or stop this line, or maybe you look at some of the faults. It could be either faults that stop a line. It could also be alarms, right? So if something is close to the threshold where it needs to be monitored, the operator is going to see an error or an alarm on this specific HMI, and he will have to go there and react in a, it could be in a number of different ways. It could be adjusting a certain parameter. It could be reprogramming something. It could be simply silencing the alarm if they don't feel like 
that is a necessary thing to address at this point in time. So one of the questions that usually gets brought up at this conversation is, can't I use my HMI software to build a SCADA system? And the short answer is yes, you can, depending on the process. So the current HMI systems have gotten so advanced that you could build or you could connect multiple PLCs to a single HMI. And so in theory, you could bypass this whole architecture, put a single panel view plus or even a Siemens terminal if you wanted to. And this HMI could connect to each one of the PLCs and it basically will accomplish in theory the same thing as a SCADA would. But in reality, it is very difficult to scale a deployment like this. So SCADA software, again, if you look at some of the different offerings from Rockwell Automation, from Siemens or from inductive automation, like their ignition product, you will notice that it scales with the production. So if you add another machine, it is not going to be a connection to another PLC. It will simply allow you to plug that in. And again, it will, I guess it will connect to the PLC, but it will connect to the PLC in a scalable way. And there's going to be a lot of tools that allow you to set up the architecture correctly when it comes to a proper SCADA product. The other thing that I've mentioned a couple of times is the whole data component. So when you have a standalone HMI, even at the machine level, you will typically run into a lot of bottlenecks when it comes to data storage. So of course you can add a memory stick, you can add an SD card, you can add a local hard drive, but a lot of times when it comes to server-based hardware, for your SCADA system, you will have a lot more options and you will have a lot more robust solutions, such as even proper databases to store some of your data. So ultimately you will have the data going from the PLCs and from the SCADA system back to the PLCs in order to solve the problem that you're looking for. In a nutshell, this is the architecture of your SCADA system. Again, this is of course oversimplified. This is a single line. A SCADA could be scaled to a very, I, want to, I don't want to say infinite, but to a very large number of different devices and systems, but ultimately its goal is to allow a control room operator to see the status of the system, to start, to stop, to adjust certain parameters, to look at past performance, but remember always on the technical side. So moving on to the next topic or discussion point of good and bad practices when it comes to SCADA. I've deployed my fair share of SCADA systems. I've troubleshot a lot of them. So I certainly have a lot of opinions when it comes to good and bad deployments. So I've already mentioned a couple of them in the conversation, but number one, picking an HMI and basically building it out to be a SCADA system is a recipe for disaster in terms of scaling. As your plan gets bigger, as you're trying to get more information out of that system, it becomes really difficult. There are ways to migrate. So if you're stay, staying with the same manufacturer, a lot of times they will allow you to transition a standalone HMI into a SCADA type of a solution. But a lot of times it is bad practice to build out an HMI into a SCADA. So I'm going to put that as a note. So an HMI is not equal to SCADA. The second and biggest strap for young engineers is the fact that a SCADA is heavily reliant on networks, right? As I've mentioned before, you're going to be connecting to multiple points within your facility and you're going to be collecting but also sending data back to them. So networking becomes extremely important. So before you can sort out the networking component, and this usually happens at the time that you're looking to deploy a SCADA, I highly recommend you do not skip the step and simply go into deploying a system which will be in a network that is not properly deployed, is not stable, is having constant issues because what's going to happen is if you have a SCADA running on a server, again, it could be a small deployment, but is not able to send those signals, you will have extremely frustrated operators. You will have to have manual interventions, someone who goes to the plant floor and actually starts or stops and or modifies those processes via local HMIs. And ultimately it will be very frustrating and almost impossible to operate in a facility that has a SCADA deployed with poor networking. And this is also a very important side point is that a lot of times as you deploy the SCADA, you will be looking at modernizing some of the components in your facility. And typically that means only changing out the hardware on the machine to be better. A lot of emphasis or a lot of problems I've seen comes from once again, networking that is not properly implemented at the time of those modernization. 
So make sure that the networking component is correct in your facility before you start scaling or deploying a new SCADA sol solution. The next strap is trying to build in MES type of functions into your SCADA. So once again, just like an HMI is not SCADA, a SCADA is not going to be your MES. So the reason why these softwares are usually intertwined is because they do have very similar features. They can be programmed. In theory, you can get a software that has been designed as a SCADA or even a software that's been designed as an MES and vice integrate vice versa. But the reality is that you need to be very careful when doing so. Because as I mentioned, a SCADA is going to reside very close to your devices and you want it to remain a control system that is going to allow you to operate the facility in a way that makes sense. Your MES is going to be concerned mostly with business metrics. It's going to be concerned with work orders. It's going to be concerned with recipes. It's going to manage at a higher level, but it's not necessarily going to control the process and impact how the process runs. So it's important to understand that your SCADA is first and most designed for control purposes. And as you start adding different components from a SCADA or from the MES onto your plant floor, as you start blurring those lines, it becomes very difficult to not put them inside of your SCADA. And at that point in time, your SCADA starts giving you random information that is not relevant to the operator. It starts giving you information that is obstructing the control of the process. So I've seen this once again in the past where you start having a recipe management and recipe control on top of your SCADA system. And then the operators from a, for a variety of reasons, start to get confused and you need to make sure that it accomplishes the basic task of the SCADA. So what is the business value of a SCADA system? As your production or as your manufacturing facility scales, as there's more and more demand for your product, you need to be able to control your system more efficiently, right? And it all comes down to being able to automate a certain process. And if you've been to a manufacturing plant that does not have a SCADA system, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, the operator needs to go to every single machine. They need to verify that everything is working fine. They need to be able to see that there's no alarms or errors or faults on the machine before they start to run that equipment. The SCADA allows you to visualize a global perspective of all those machines, be able to configure the machines as they need to be running and be able to start or stop the process in different areas. So ultimately it is all about efficiency. It is all about information that can help you run better, have less quality defects, for example, being able to adjust things before they become a problem. So the goal here is ultimately provide business value through automation, through orchestration, and be able to see the data that you need to control your process better. And so a lot of times, again, this is not some kind of a difficult ROI calculation. Usually you simply run into bottlenecks or you're spending way too much time going from machine to machine or your startup time is way too difficult, for example, on Monday. So some facilities are going to be small enough to not run on Sunday as a shift. And so on Monday, they simply spend way too much time to start because they're going from machine to machine. And so they'll start looking at a SCADA solution that will be scalable, that will allow them to save on the amount of time spent doing all of those tasks. So you can start thinking about the dollar value of a SCADA that will reduce and ultimately automate some of those processes when it comes to running your line, your process, or the entire facility or area.